Hello and welcome everyone to the fifth part of the OpenGL uh, programming tutorial series in C Sharp using the OpenTK library. So in the previous part uh, we had this result uh, rotating cube in 60 FPS. So now we're going to learn something about uh, translation, rotation and scaling. Um, so these are called the matrix transformations although we are not going to uh, modify the mat matrices the model view matrix directly ourselves um, but we'll use some function calls which will modify it accordingly so we are have already been using the translation and rota rotation functions uh, the new function which will be introduced to will be the scale scale uh, so we'll also know about scaling um, although I've explained the translation and rotation a bit in the previous video but um, I'll explain it in more detail here so let's first start with translation so the gl dot translate function takes three arguments although it has overloads for float and double and also you can pass vectors into it which contain three elements so basically three arguments which specify a 3d point so we'll first have a look at translation in the 2d uh, coordinate system so the xy plane so translation is basically the changing the place of the origin so we'll translate the origin to a different place so all of the things that are objects that are drawn after the translation will be drawn according to the new coordinate system so the new origin we have after that so here we have a 2d coordinate system so x and y so if we pass uh, the value let's suppose we have a translation function for the 2d coordinate system so if we pass the value of 1 comma 1 to the translation function so this point 1 comma 1 will this point is located here so this will become the new origin so uh, all of the things uh, objects drawn after the translation will be drawn according to this system so the x and y axis um, and this will be point 1 and this will be 2 here 1 2 similarly for the y axis so we are just simply translating the origin to a different place so where you can use this um, is that you can if you have a geometry for an object which is uh, drawn around the origin so you can actually translate to different places and call that geometry again and again so first you can translate to this point and then draw your object and then you can translate to a different point like this and then you can draw your object here uh, like this you can translate to this point and then draw it here so this actually makes easier of uh, for drawing objects as, at different places um, using the same geometry and now the next thing uh, so we have already used the translation function here I'm not going over that again so we are just translating uh, the origin to minus 50 of z axis um, and the um, 0 comma 0 comma 5 minus 50 so the negative side is into the screen so we're translating to that position and we're drawing the stuff there now let's have a look at the rotate so you can see it takes four arguments gl dot rotate uh, four arguments all doubles the first one is the angle and the next three arguments the first one is the angle of rotation and the next three arguments specify a vector in the 3d coordinate system along which the rotation takes place so this is basically the axis along which the rotation will take, take place and the rotation follows the right hand rule uh, I'll explain that to you in a bit uh, so it uh, also has other overloads like uh, for the float and also for the vector float uh, specify an angle and then the second argument will be the vector which has three elements which specifies the ve uh, vector for the rotation so let's have a look at this um, we'll actually need the 3d coordinate system now here so let's suppose um, this is the z-axis here so now um, let's suppose we have a square in the xy plane so this is in the xy plane this uh, does not overlap 
Oops. So this is in the XY plane. Um, so basically, uh, we want to rotate it 30 degrees and we want to draw it somewhat like, oh, come on, uh, like this. So we rotate it 30 degrees to this side. 30 degrees rotation so we can simply know by uh, here that the axis of rotation is the z-axis so the vector which we need to pass for the rotation into the function will be uh, 0 comma 0 comma 1 which will be the z-axis and the rotation is follows right hand rule which means that if the vector is pointing outwards of the screen then the rotation will take place counterclockwise and similarly if you want to reverse the direction of the rotation you can you should reverse the direction of the vector and then the rotation will take place to the other side or another way you can do this by not reversing the vector is specifying the angle in the negative value so like um, this is 30 degrees rotation and the minus 30 degrees will be this side so you can actually specify different vectors uh, like if you specify 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma minus 1 so that uh, then it will point to direction somewhere like this and then the rotation will take place along this vector um, the angle of the rotation being the one specified by you uh, in the first argument so and we should remember that um, the objects which have already been drawn will, will not be affected by the rotation function so we first draw an object then apply rotation the object uh, then the object will have uh, then the rotation will have no effect on the object so first we need to rotate and then draw so now we'll come to the scale function which we have not used yet so it also takes three arguments which are the scale factors along the three axes so, so, so the scale factor for the x-axis uh, so the scale factors for the, all the three axes so if you already know what the scale factor is then um, you'll uh, have a good idea about how it works um, and you might also not need the explanation for it but uh, I'm going to explain this anyhow uh, so the scale factor for each of the axes so you can specify different scale factors for each of the axes so uh, remember not to pass the value 0 into it because that will I'll just explain how it works so on a 2d coordinate system so let's suppose we are drawing we have a geometry for cube which has dimensions 1 comma 1 and is drawn like this one point at the origin and the other means the, the two coordinates of a diagonal are 0 comma 0 and the other one is 1 comma 1 and if we apply the scale factor of 2 to both x and y axis so we first scale it uh, 2 comma 2 the scale factors for both of these axes and then we draw the same cube with dimensions 1 into 1 then this will be drawn like this because we have applied the scale factor of 2 which means the size will double which will make it twice so if we sim uh, similarly specify the scale factor 3 comma 3 then the cube will be drawn somewhat like this and you can also specify the scale factor as 0 0.5 and it will be drawn like this half so this is how the scale factor works and if you uh, and you can have different scale factor for different axes um, for different axes so like the for x axis you have scale factor of 1 and for y uh, x axis you have scale factor of 2 and for y you have 1 then the cube then the square will be drawn this way although it will not look like square look like rectangle but we are using the geometry of a square just the scale factor on the x-axis is twice that of y-axis so you can specify different scale factors to different axes so similarly this works for the 3d coordinate system so uh, just like I explained for the rotation you first need to scale and then draw um, the objects which have already been drawn will not be affected by the scale command so uh, if you uh, so uh, if you want it to stay the same like uh, if you pass the values 1 comma 1 comma 1 it'll have no effect uh, and you can calculate that yourself uh, so we'll just make the scale factor half for all the x's and the cube will be drawn in half the size which it was earlier and similarly we can try applying different scale factors to 
different axis and we can see that it is it is now being drawn like a rectangle a cuboid so this is how scale works and um, you'll get used to it once you um, keep using it for your applications um, we're uh, going to use it in upcoming video tutorials too uh, and now I'll show you how you can save the state of the matrix and retrieve it later on so that is very useful if you want to draw uh, if you have to draw a large number of objects so you can first uh, save the metric state before drawing the object and then retrieve it after drawing that and you can do same for all of the objects so that will not affect the other things that are in the applications so the you can save the metric state by gl oh gl dot push matrix so it takes no arguments so it'll just save the metric state like this it is here and now you can and now if you want to retrieve it you can use gl dot pop matrix so this retrieves the state which was saved here you can actually nest these commands uh, it is uh, you can nest these so at this place this state will be retrieved and at this place this one will be retrieved although um, will not use nesting uh, yet because um, our application is not that complicated so uh, in the de increasing level of uh, complexity uh, you might use these commands and use these function calls uh, by nesting them uh, but here uh, we'll just have a slight look at what these are capable of doing so uh, first I push the metric state and then I apply some scaling and then I use this pop matrix so this state which was saved here uh, all of that will be retrieved at this point so this is not included in the state that was saved here so this will not take effect on any of the things following this so you use it for drawing objects in a different uh, transformation so you can draw here so first push uh, the push the state and then apply some transformations and then draw the stuff which will be drawn according to this transformation and then you can retrieve the state later on uh, and this will be drawn without this so uh, if you want to have a better look of how you can use it mm, so I'll explain to you but for first we need to make our code a bit more managed so uh, I'll uh, put the cube geometry in a different function We'll call it draw cube and we'll uh, copy all this geometry from GL begin to GL end and we'll remove all this from here and we'll paste it in the draw cube so this draw cube function now draws the cube geometry and now here in the rendering function we'll first save the metric state before we apply any transformations so we'll first save the metric state as we do here save the metric state apply some transformations then we'll apply some scaling um, so let's draw this to the left side so it'll be minus 20 so left side of the x axis so this will be drawn at the left side of the screen we translate to the left side and after scaling we'll call the draw cube function and then we'll retrieve the max metric state so here we save the metric state and here we retrieved it so this is reset now uh, and now what we can do is we can do all of this stuff again to draw a different cube at a different position so here the first cube from here to here and then the second cube we apply the translation to tr uh, uh, translate to a point on the right side so this will be drawn on the right side so we'll apply some different rotations uh, so different rotations to it and some different scaling um, let's keep it 1.3 and when, then we draw the cube again so this is the first cube is drawn at the left side and then the state is restored so the origin uh, I'm not able to explain this so 
we first translate to the left side and we mm, uh, pop the metric state so it'll be retrieved like it was here and then we translate to the right side and then we draw the cube again using some different transformations different scale values so now we should have two cubes if you've done everything right so there we go um, the second one is more like a cuboid because we apply different scaling uh, scale factors to different axes so this is our output for this application so this is how you can use the GL push matrix and pop matrix um, and you can always put the geometry of your models to um, into different functions to make your code more managed so this was all for this video tutorial um, and I'll see you next time